The keto diet means that you're eating a lot of fats. Now, if you don't have a gallbladder or you have any other kind of gall issue, this might concern you because to the naked eye, it would seem like, well, if I don't have a gallbladder, there's no way I can do keto because I won't be able to digest fats. Honestly, that couldn't be further from the truth. See, the gallbladder is just a storage mechanism for bile. So I'm gonna make it all very clear in this video. I'm gonna give you some very specific, tangible things that you can do to help make the digestion of fats easier with or without a gallbladder. So even if you do have a gallbladder, you're still gonna get some awesome tricks out of this video. Hey, you're watching the internet's leading performance and nutrition channel. With new videos and regular programming coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos sprinkled on throughout the week as well, just so you have extra content. I'm gonna make sure that you hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live. And also, head on over to highly.com to check out the apparel that I'm always wearing in my videos. All right, so you lost your gallbladder. What does that mean? What's happening inside your body? Well, let's break it down a little bit. When you consume fat, here's what happens. Okay, you consume it, it goes into your stomach, it starts to break down, it reacts with specific enzymes. Okay, then once it goes into the small intestine, the liver produces bile. Yeah, you heard me right. The liver produces bile, not the gallbladder. So the liver produces bile in order to help emulsify and break down those fats. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you know that fats don't ever fully digest. They just emulsify. And it's the job of the bile to emulsify them. So the liver produces the bile, the bile goes into the small bowel, and it starts to break down the fats as much as it can. Okay, well, believe it or not, you don't need all that much bile to break down fats. So what ends up happening is you have a bunch of extra bile that didn't get utilized. And that bile gets reabsorbed into the bloodstream and then goes into the gallbladder. Okay, so that's what the gallbladder does. The gallbladder is just a storage mechanism for the extra bile that the liver produces. And the reason that the body does this is to sort of preserve the efficiency of the liver. That way the liver can produce bile, extra bile can go into the storage mechanism of the gallbladder, and the liver's not having to always be obligated to produce bile. It doesn't always have to be on call, for lack of a better word. So when you do not have a gallbladder, the only difference that really occurs is you don't have a preset storage form of bile. The liver is required to produce bile every time, which sounds like a horrible thing, but it's really not that big of a deal. All it means is that the bile that's produced in your liver goes directly into the small intestine, and it's not quite as concentrated because it hasn't been sitting in its storage form just sort of brewing. It's just inputted directly into the small intestine from the liver, and it aids in digestion. No big deal, okay? So I'm gonna give you some specific things that you can do as far as your eating timing and as far as certain things that you can eat that are gonna help you digest fats a little bit easier if you don't have a gallbladder. But first, even if you do have a gallbladder, there's something that I need to debunk, okay? It's the world of gallstones. Gallstones are little chunks of cholesterol that basically get solidified and clog up our gallbladder. Now, people would generally think that the more fat that you eat, the higher risk you are of having gallstones. Not the case at all, that's not how it works. You see, believe it or not, the gallstones are formed from a lot of different things, and higher fat diets actually flush out the gallstones. See, there was actually a study that was published in the American Gastroenterological Association Journal that found when they took a look at subjects that consumed either a high fat diet or a low fat diet, that the subjects that consumed a high fat diet had a lower risk of gallstones than those that consumed a low fat diet. And again, it comes right back down to the fact that that gallbladder is used when you break down fats. So the more fats that you're consuming, the more the bile is running through the system and keeping the system and the lines clean. So you have a less likely chance of getting gallstones if you're on a keto diet than if you were eating a traditional diet. So that's true whether you have a gallbladder or not. Now let's give you some tactical things that you can do, okay? First off, if you're on a keto diet, you don't have a gallbladder. You're going to have to accept the fact that when you first get into ketosis, you're gonna to have to reduce your fat intake. Not for good, not forever, but just as your body's getting used to this. Your liver is gonna modulate, your body is smart, your liver's gonna understand that you're starting to consume more fats. So it's gonna know and be able to throttle how much bile it produces. So just bear with it for a good six to eight weeks and know that it might take you a little bit longer to get into ketosis than the person next to you, okay? No big deal. The other thing that's a stark difference from what I normally preach is that you're gonna to have to eat smaller meals for a while. Okay, not necessarily forever, but at least for the first few months. Smaller meals are gonna allow your liver the opportunity to produce bile at the rate that it needs to produce it. If you were to consume a copious amount of fat all at once and you didn't have a gallbladder, your liver would have a hard time keeping up. 
Now, once your liver is accustomed to this and you're consuming more fats on a regular basis, it's all good. But you're gonna have to go with like five, six meals per day, even though it goes against the grain of what I normally talk about. Don't worry, it's not the end of the world. As long as you're still in a deficit, you will still come out fine. Now, this next thing is something that you can do right away. Whether you have a gallbladder or not, it's gonna help you out. Okay, you can start consuming soluble fiber with your fats. So soluble fiber sort of turns into a gel when it goes through digestion. It draws in water, and what that does is it ends up creating this gel-like substance that slows down the digestion of just about everything that it's involved with. So if you consume, say, some coconut oil, and then you also consume some form of soluble fiber along with that, the soluble fiber is gonna turn into a gel that's gonna slow down the breakdown of the coconut oil, giving your body a chance to produce enough bile to thoroughly break it down. Now, here's a really cool one that a lot of people don't know about. This is artichokes. Okay, I talk about artichokes in other videos as they're a phenomenal prebiotic. Okay, they add great amounts of good bacteria into your body through the way of fertilizing the good bacteria that already exists. Now, one thing that people don't know about artichokes is that it stimulates bile production. See, there was actually a study that was published in the Journal of Phytomedicine that found that just 30 minutes after consuming artichokes, there is a 127% increase in bile production. And 60 minutes after consuming artichokes, there is a 151% increase in bile production. So yeah, even if you don't have a gallbladder, if you just consume some artichokes with your meals, not only are you getting some fiber that's slowing down digestion, but you're also boosting bile production. This puts you in a very advantageous situation if you don't have a gallbladder. So I highly suggest adding artichokes to the mix. You honestly can't lose. They're great no matter what. And honestly, dipping a little bit of artichokes in some mayonnaise is a pretty darn perfect keto treat. The next thing that you can start doing is another thing that I talk about all the time, apple cider vinegar. Now in this particular case, I know I talk about capsules, I know I talk about liquid, you're gonna wanna go with the liquid in this case because the liquid ACV is shown to thin bile. What that means is that the body's gonna have an easier time processing it. It's gonna be able to produce a little bit more because it's thinner and it's gonna move through the ducts faster, which means that it can come from the liver into your small intestine significantly faster and give you the ease and the digestive comfort that you need when you're starting to break down more fats than your body's accustomed to. Last but not least, and man, this video is just kind of going against the grain of a lot of things that I talk about, but you're gonna wanna lean on medium chain triglycerides a little bit more than someone that's on just a traditional keto diet. Now, normally I say use MCTs in moderation because why? They're shorter chain, which means they give you quick energy but not the long tail energy that you want. Well, if you're someone that doesn't have a gallbladder, long chain fatty acids are harder for you to break down. They're bigger molecules. Medium chain triglycerides don't involve the bile. You see, they go directly into absorption and give you immediate fuel. So for you on the keto diet without a gallbladder, MCTs are going to be your friend. So you're gonna lean on them a little bit heavier than someone else would. I would recommend about 40% of your fats come from MCTs if you don't have a gallbladder. It's going to help you break them down a little bit faster and it's gonna still allow you to produce ketones. So the first part of your keto diet, when you're first starting your keto journey and you don't have a gallbladder, load up on the MCT so you can at least get yourself into ketosis and then start incorporating the fats into the mix. So I hope that this video clears some things up and gives you the peace of mind that you can absolutely do the keto diet. In fact, you can have the utmost success. You just have to understand how the body works. If you have ideas for future videos or even specific medical conditions that you're concerned with and how they interact with keto, I'd be happy to address them. I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on TV, but I can at least give you some good solid information. I'll see you in the next video.